Hey guys, it may be past Halloween, but that doesn't make the launch of Dawn of Madness's Kickstarter campaign any less of an event. With some extra time to cook in the oven, is this a love crafty and pie baked to perfection? Was it worth the wait? Let's take a look. As always, we're going straight to the game details. Ah, who am I kidding? It's my channel, my video, and I'ma do a plug if I want to. No, seriously though, I have an unboxing of the Dawn of Madness miniatures linked below and an incredibly detailed unboxing of an almost all-in deep madness down there as well. I'll be reviewing Dawn of Madness here shortly, so if you want to ensure you see that, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications so YouTube is actually helpful and shows you the video. Okay, seriously now, game details time. Fun fact that I want you to keep in mind as I discuss the game is that every miniature in Dawn of Madness is a unique sculpt. And I don't mean unique as in it's the same thing but posed differently. Every single miniature is unique. Dawn of Madness is a prequel to the hit Deep Madness and takes place many years before it. As a group of 1-4 to four players, you will cooperatively work through one of four unique stories about one of your characters. These stories contain their own story, tokens, cards, and enemies. Each one also has four different endings. Which one you will get depends on several factors during your playthrough, such as the choices you make during the game and in what order you make them. Everyone plays as wanderers, and each story focuses on diving deep into the psyche of a single wanderer. With over 200 encounters and memories and hundreds of storybook entries in just the core box and with many endings to the game, while story heavy, supports many playthroughs. Like Nemesis in Resident Evil 3, the game has four unique abominations that torment the players throughout the course of the campaign. You cannot attack them directly, but instead must fight them via malformations and resistance cards. Speaking of malformations, these are the dark, twisted versions of your character. In general, they should be avoided, but they are also the only way to fight the abominations. Good luck. Each Wanderer will have Sentience tokens that they gain from Sentience dice and some domain cards that interact with these in different ways. Additionally, each Wanderer has a unique inner offering that is a personal ability of theirs to help in certain situations. Turn order and how much you can do is defined by your mental capacity. The player with the highest capacity plays first, and so on, until everyone runs out so no more actions can be taken, ending the round. Customizing a Wanderer to your personal story comes naturally as you make choices. Choices can provide memory cards, coda cards, plot tokens, and even new encounters. These define your own Wanderer throughout the entire campaign. There are nine conditions in the core game that can affect you in various ways. Most are bad, but some are good, and each one is removed in a different way. And with that, we're on to the campaign specifics. This is a full-length campaign on Kickstarter, which is nice. With Byron free to share his twisted stories, I'm sure there will be a plethora of cool updates full of lore and mechanics. Shipping will be done in two waves, and shipping will cost what it costs. Knowing how these games expand, the more you add, the higher the shipping cost will be, of course. That first wave will include the core box, miniature box, and all core level stretch goals, and the miniature-specific otherworld stretch goals that accompany them. It is estimated to deliver October 2021, with the second wave set for June 2022. Why is that so far out? So it's more guaranteed to deliver in time. Otherwise, they might have to pull a come on and delay the delivery for six months with no honest explanation to their backers. Currently, and I stress currently, there are only two pledge tiers. The Core Experience tier at $79, and the Otherworld Experience at $139. The core experience tier is much like Oathsworn's standee tier. This is a Dawn of Madness core box with every figure represented with a standee. You will also get all unlocked core level stretch goals. In other words, you won't receive the miniature versions of the stretch goals that are unlocked. What comes with that? Well, the horrific story that totals more than 250,000 words for one. You experience this via four storybooks, one for each of the main characters, those characters have double-layered dashboards to accompany the big game board and the four conscious realm sheets. The board and the sheet represent your play area. A lot of this story is actually contained in the over 1,000 cards that come with the core game, as well as over 500 tokens. Those standees, by the way, total 80 right from the start, and to top it all off, there are, will be 15 fully custom dice. Eat your heart out, come on. Okay, so 80 standees. 
1,000 plus cards, and 500 plus tokens is a ton of stuff for sure. So what about that other tier? Well, the other world experience is again much like Oathsworn, just the same game, but with an added miniatures box as well as receiving both the core level and other world level stretch goals. What this means is that any story cards and whatnot you'll still get from the core level stretch goals, but you'll also nab some really cool miniatures via stretch goals as well. That miniatures box, by the way, has 40 unique sculpt miniatures, with many of them being quite large. Additionally, and this is really important here, if you back at this level right now, the day I launch this video, which means the first 24 hours, you'll get the Watchers expansion box for free. After 24 hours, this will be available as an optional buy. This expansion comes with three Watchers, Infinite, Genesis, and Eternal. How these work into the game is something I don't know yet, but I do know they look awesome. There also seems to be quite a bit of story lore around them. While information about this is slim prior to the campaign launch, when I'm making this video, there will of course be many stretch goals and at least some optional buys. Now it wouldn't be a video on this channel without my personal opinion shoved down your throat, so let's get that out of the way with the King's Decree. Before I speak about the game itself, I just want to give a huge shout out to Dimension Games. As you guys well know by now, I speak my mind, and I can be overly critical. While this is always in a strive to improve the industry and especially consumer education, not every company is okay with that. Dimension Games isn't one of those. They've been wonderful to communicate with and have an honest passion to make a good product for us, and I consider anyone willing to put what they created in front of me for open critique to honestly care, so props to them for that. I think it speaks volumes about the character of the company. As for the game itself, I've not played it yet. I have it sitting here in my office right next to me and will be tackling the rulebook shortly, so again, expect my full thoughts on the game soon. Outside of that, I think the fact that the miniatures are all unique sculpts, and the basing and storage of Deep Madness which had no snap-in trays, and an optional foam storage solution leads me to believe that this will be a painter's dream. The miniatures have some great quality, are fantastically sculpted, and have lots of options for technical work with the gore aspect. Speaking of sculpt design, my goodness are these amazing. If you watched my unboxing of the Dawn of Madness miniatures, then you already know where I'm headed with this. So you know how your characters essentially descend into madness? Well, the way that is captured with the miniature sculpts are absolutely fantastic. For instance, take Cloud Reinhardt, one of the playable characters. Pretty cool miniatures, right? On their own, out of context, they might seem to have a flow together, but here's the kicker. He's a detective that had a terrible childhood in a town he hates. After moving away and finding out his wife is pregnant, she's suddenly kidnapped and a note is left telling him to return to that despicable town if he wants to see her again. So he starts with his coat drawn back to reveal his holstered gun. The next time you see him, his coat is off and being dragged, and his gun is now unholstered, but not aimed. The miniature is called Fuzzy Recollections. The next miniature is called Her Own Fault. Now he is much more aggressively pointing his gun forward. His chained watch is now binding him, and we can see a woman with her stomach open inside his coat, continuing to be dragged. In the final form, we see the Powers Within miniature, where he's attempted to shoot himself, but has been prevented by what he carries on his back. The metaphors are thick here, and I could go on and on about how his nice coat would represent his normal life he's trying to hold on to, even if he can't wear it anymore, about how the woman he's dragging in his coat could allude to his wife, his chance at a normal life, and how in the end, right before losing himself completely, he tries to end it. How the growth on his back is quite literal baggage, how his face splits in two at the end, as if a split life or split personality or even tendencies is showing through, much like how he turns from aggressive to reluctant. I could then add to all of that the fact that there are nursery rhyme tokens in his story section, how the enemies are sirens of seduction and allure that very well might beckon him, or how the final boss of his story is called Birth and a woman in the coat, whose stomach is again laid open as she tries to hold it in, wearing his coat. I mean, come on! When was the last time you saw that level of depth and storytelling through the entire medium of a board game? It's not just a story you read, it's in the tokens, it's in the map, it's in the car tiles, and it's in the miniatures themselves. And they are all like that, like Emily Hawkins' the nurse. She starts out as just a normal nurse at an asylum, but over her transformation, she goes from being a nurse, someone who helps people, to feeling the onset of darkness and turning towards violent mania. As she transforms, you can see in each miniature that her smile grows more and more. 
She is relishing in the violence and pain towards others, and her tools that were meant to help people are now just weapons to end their life. I just can't get over this. Seriously, that's just simply amazing. I always say that a good miniature sculpt can tell a story, but these are a story in and of themselves. To be honest, there's not much more I could say here that could top what I already have. The setting is as dark as you can get, the story is mature and serious, and the art is fantastic, even elevated above Deep Madness by quite a margin for my taste. Speaking of which, Dimension Games takes the time to name all of the artists and sculptors, which is awesome. Artists are so often the drummer of the band, integral to the end result, but always in the background, rarely getting attention. And appreciation of art is important and shows the maturity of the company that gives them a proper limelight. All that being said, is it October 2021 yet? Whew, alright, that's it for this video. Again, I will be reviewing the game very soon, so be on the lookout for that. I already have the unboxings listed below, and of course a link to the Kickstarter, which is now live. Don't forget to keep that 24 hour free expansion in mind and if you're watching this a day or two late, consider subscribing and optioning into notifications so that I can help you out in future videos in this series with my day one details videos. If I've helped you in the past and you have the desire and ability to help support this sort of honest game coverage aimed not for the companies but for us the consumers and our benefit, then consider checking out my Patreon link below. I never charge for any of my videos and speak freely with no constraints to any company. That means you can rest assured that I'm not just pushing a company's agenda, but it also means that most other channels make far, far more money that they can then put back into their channels for better audio, lighting, and more. I can truly say that videos just like this are thanks to my wonderful, amazing, and truly awesome patrons, so a huge shout out to them. Most of the games you see me review and the camera and audio system I have right now are thanks to them after all. Regardless though, thank you so much for watching and I truly hope my video helped you learn more about Dawn of Madness as a game and a Kickstarter campaign to see if it's a good fit for you and your gaming group or not. With that in mind, thank you for being part of such an awesome community here on the channel and I hope you have an amazing day.